Hello and welcome to our new Turkish learning series called Learn Turkish Through Stories. Uh, in these lessons, we will learn Turkish grammar, vocabulary, speaking, and listening all through stories. These stories will differ in difficulty for each episode, and some of them will be suitable for beginners, some of them for intermediate learners, and some for advanced Turkish speakers. I will provide the text, grammar points, and the vocabulary explanation as a downloadable sheet inside the lesson description. For this lesson, I will first read the Turkish story at a moderate level, so not really fast, not really slow, and later translate the sentences of the story, sentence by sentence, into English, and we will examine the grammar, the vocabulary, Uh, while translating the sentences to English, and sometimes I will create example sentences with the grammar and the vocabulary we are translating. From time to time, I will prompt you to make example sentences with the sentences we are examining. And this lesson is published both on our social media channels, like the YouTube channel, the Facebook channel of Turkishaholic, and the Turkishaholic podcast. So, if you would like to share your example sentences uh, when I give you a prompt, please comment on the social media channels. So, if you're ready, let's start today's lesson. So, for today, we will be examining a story called Gezmeyi Seven Arch. So, if you're familiar with Uh, our lessons. I actually used to do uh, learning Turkish with stories in our live YouTube lessons. So this is basically going to be a continuation of this lesson because I was really occupied. I didn't have time to do the live lessons. So instead, I wanted to make these lessons into a more consumable format. Uh, they're not going to be a live lesson like earlier, but still we will follow a similar structure that we used to do in our earlier lessons. So, first I'm going to read the story slowly. Not slowly, but not fast, but at a moderate level. So, listen closely. If you like, uh, you can listen only. If you like, if you're watching it, watching this lesson on our social media channel, you can also follow along while I'm reading uh, the story. Okay? Bir varmış, bir yokmuş. Yem yeşil bir bahçede yaşayan bir ağaç varmış. Çocuk gibiymiş bu ağaç. İçi içine sığmazmış. Ama bütün diğer ağaçlar gibi o da toprağa bağlı, yerinden hiç kıpırdamadan büyümek zorundaymış. Oysa çocuklar gibi koşup oynamak, dağlara tırmanmak, denizde yüzmek istermiş. Çevresindeki evlerin içlerini de merak edermiş. Kırmızı damlı cam pencereli evlerin kapılarından çocuklar girer çıkarmış. Ağaç onların içeride neler yaptığını, evlerinin içinin neye benzediğini çok merak edermiş. Zavallı ağaç kökleriyle topraktan besleniyor, yapraklarıyla nefes alıyor ama yürüyemiyormuş. Gezemiyor, dolaşamıyor, konuşamıyormuş. Günlerini, aylarını hep aynı yerde kıpırdamadan durarak geçirmek zorundaymış. Yaz mevsiminin bitiminde bir gün tatlı tatlı bir sonbahar rüzgarı esmiş. Gezmeyi seven ağacın çevresinde dans edip durmuş, ağacı güldürmeye çalışmış. Ama boşuna ağaç o kadar üzgünmüş ki. Neden böyle üzgünsün diye sormuş rüzgar ağaca. Nasıl üzgün olmayayım ki demiş ağaç. Dünyadaki bütün canlılar yürüyor, koşuyor, yüzüyor ya da uçuyor. Ya ben? Ben burada toprağa çakılıp kalmışım. Oysa dünyayı gezip dolaşmak, Yeni yerler görmek isterdim. Üzülme demiş rüzgar. Bir çaresini buluruz elbet. 
yapraklarından birini bana ver. Rüzgar biraz kuvvetlice esmiş. Ağacın bir yaprağını koparmış. Sonra yaprağı aldığı gibi evlerden birinin açık penceresinden içeriye üflemiş. Yaprak salına salına odanın ortasına düşmüş. İşte gördün mü? demiş rüzgar. Evin içine girdin bile. Başka gitmek istediğin yerler var mı? Evet, evet demiş ağaç sevinçle. Bir yaprağını daha rüzgarın esintisine bırakmış. Rüzgar yaprağı uçurup yakınlardaki derenin suyuna bırakmış. Dere yaprağı sürükleyip çok uzaklardaki denizlere götürecekmiş. Sevinç içindeymiş ağaç. Sararan yapraklarını teker teker rüzgara bırakıyor. Her yaprak geze dolana uça savrula bir başka yere gidiyormuş. Sonunda ağacın hiç yaprağı kalmamış. Ama olsun. Zaten sonbaharda yaprakları hep dökülürmüş. İlkbahar geldiğinde yine yapraklanacak değil miymiş? Bir sonraki sonbaharda yapraklarını nereye göndereceğinin hayalini şimdiden kurmaya başlamış. Gezmeyi seven ağaç çok mutluymuş. Okay, so we finished reading the story Gezmeyi Seven Ağaç. Okay, I hope you like the story. So, first of all, What do you think this story is about? So, if you didn't know the translation, if you just listened to the story, would you know the theme of the story? Would you, can you guess it? So, the title says, Gezmeyi Seven Ağaç. So, if we were to translate this title into English, uh, it would be The Tree Who Likes Traveling. So, basically... This is a tree that is turned into a, a human. So it's like a humanification uh, of a tree in the story. So it's acting like a child, actually. Right? So it also mentions in the story that this tree is acting like a child. And there's a reason uh, that he or she, we don't know the gender, uh, likes to travel. And we... Uh, we will know once we start translating the story. Okay? So, if you're watching this uh, on our YouTube channel or Facebook, please let me know what you think about this story. And if you think there's a meaning to this story, maybe there's a meaning to uh, all the things that are written in the story, please share your opinions, share your comments with me. I would like to read Uh, more from you. Let's start translating this story sentence by sentence. While we're translating, we will also uh, do some grammar explanation if needed. For example, if there's a grammar point that you need to know to understand the story, I will also explain it. Okay? So, bir varmış, bir yokmuş. So, In most Turkish stories that you may read in uh, books, we have this phrase, bir varmış, bir yokmuş. I mean, if you examine the grammar, it's var and yok, to exist and to not exist. And we have the so, mish suffix. This is the evidential past. So we use the mish suffix for storytelling. So you will see that in this text we use the mish suffix a lot. So in almost at the end of each tense we conjugate the tense with the mish, the evidential past, because we use it a lot in storytelling. And bir varmış, bir yokmuş means once upon a time. So this is the phrase that we use in Turkish stories. This means once upon a time. Okay? So bir varmış, bir yokmuş means once upon a time. Yem yeşil bir bahçede yaşayan bir ağaç varmış. So yem yeşil is very green, you know, lush green. And in this 
garden, there was a tree that was living in this garden. So, yashayan. So, here we have a relative clause. Do you know what kind of a relative clause? The yashayan bir aç. So, the an suffix, right? The ye, a, ne suffix. This is, is basically the subject relative clause. So, this is a relative clause that focuses on the subjects. The subject here is bir aç, yashayan bir aç. So where is the tree living? In the garden. Bahçede yaşayan bir ağaç. We can also say, uh, for example, uh, okula giden çocuk. The boy who goes to school. So this is different from the object relative clause. Maybe we will have some in this uh, story. But if not, if you want to study this structure, it's Subject relative clause, and there's also the object relative clause. I have a lesson on this, on the speaking Turkish in 30 days lesson. Yemmişil bir bahçede yaşayan bir ağaç varmış. There was a tree living in this lush green garden. So çocuk gibiymiş bu ağaç. This tree was like a child. So çocuk gibi. Like. So the gibi is like. For example, we can say Ahmet e, çocuk gibi. So Ahmet is like a child. Or bebek gibi. It's like a baby. He is like a baby. So we can use the structure e, after a noun. Çocuk gibi. E, like a girl. Kız gibi. Heh. So kız gibi top oynuyorsun. So you play ball like a girl. So sometimes there's a phrase like that. We use it a lot. So. We can use it, and if you have some examples, I would like you to write them in the comments. Dat dat dat gibi, dat dat dat yapıyor. So, çocuk gibi oyun oynuyor. So, he is playing like a child. So, çocuk gibiymiş. So, this tree was like a child. İçi içine sığmazmış. So, this means, iç means inside. His inside doesn't fit his insides. So, this basically means he is always excited. He is always he always wants to examine, to explore. İçi içine sığmamak means to have too much energy and doesn't know how to uh, use that energy. He wants to or she wants to do a lot of things. İçi içine sığmak, sığmaz. So this is the negative our stance plus the evidential past. Ama bütün diğer ağaçlar gibi o da toprağa bağlı yerinden hiç kıpırdamadan büyümek zorundaymış. But like all the other trees ama bütün diğer ağaçlar gibi like all the other trees he, she or it was also connected to the Earth, toprak is earth or ground. Ve and yerinden hiç kıpırdamadan büyümek zorundaymış. So here we can see has to, need to, have to. So it has to grow without moving from its place. So yerinden its place kıpırdamadan. Kıpırdamak means to move. Without moving its, from its place it had to grow like all the other trees. Oysa çocuklar gibi koşup dağlara tırmanmak, denizde yüzmek istermiş. And again, we can see the gibi, çocuk gibi, çocuklar gibi. Oysa means, but actually, so it's a conjunction. So actually, it wants to run, play, climb the mountains and swim in the seas like children. So this is physically impossible for a tree, but the tree is like a child. So, koşup oynamak, ıp oynamak. So, we use the ıp suffix a lot, meaning doing two actions at the same time or simultaneously. So, koşup oynamak, so running and playing, run and play. Dağlara tırmanmak, to climb the mountains. Denizde yüzmek, to swim in the seas. Çevresindeki evlerin işlerini de merak edermiş. So çevresindeki çevre is environment. 
And the key is a locative key suffix. Locative key is uh, basically talking about a spatial area. Which at its place. So it means basically the which word, which word in this area. The houses in its environment. The houses which were in its environment. Çevresindeki evlerin içlerini de merak edermiş. İçleri is inside. It's inside. And merak etmek is to wonder, right? To wonder, the verb to wonder. And there's a içlerini de means it's inside to. The, it's not the locative case, it's the to word. Uh, kırmızı damlı. Cam pencereli evlerin kapılarından çocuklar girer çıkarmış. So the children were entering and exiting where? From the houses with uh, red roofs and glass windows. So the children were entering and exiting the door of the houses with red roofs and big windows. Cam pencereli. Pencere is window, jam glass, kırmızı dam is red roof. Girer çıkar. So girer çıkar, as you can see, we can use two our tense verbs together. Yapar eder. Girer çıkar. Görür edir. This is a bit uh, intermediate Turkish, so right now I'm not going to prompt you to write example sentences. Let's move on. Ağaç onların içeride neler yaptığını... Evlerinin içinin neye benzediğini çok merak edermiş. So the tree was curious. What was he or she or it curious about? What these people, the child, children were doing inside? Onların içeride neler yaptığını? And how the inside of the house looked. So you may have noticed that neler yaptığını... This is also a relative clause. So what kind of a relative clause is this? It's object relative clause. Neler yaptığını merak ediyor. He is wondering what they are doing inside. Neler yaptığını merak ediyor. So if you're interested, uh, you can maybe try to make an example sentence. So the object relative clause is basically the root stem verb. Plus the past tense, the projectional suffix, the to suffix. Uh, and it's actually not the do suffix, but the dık suffix. And later we attach accusative, yaptığını. And another uh, possessive suffix, onun ne yaptığını. Onun ne yaptığını, onun gördüğünü. What he did, what he saw. So he was wondering what they were doing. İçeride, içeride neler yaptığını merak edermiş, merak ediyormuş. So you can say for example, Ahmet'in yemek yediğini gördü. So he or she saw that Ahmet was eating. So if you're interested, maybe try making some sentences with the relative clause. I actually have a lesson on object and subject relative clauses in speaking Turkish in 30 days lesson. So first maybe watch that lesson and later if you understood how to make the structure, then you can try to make an example sentence. Okay. Zavallı ağaç. Poor tree. Kökleriyle topraktan besleniyor. Yapraklarıyla nefes alıyor. Ama yürüyemiyormuş. The poor tree was feeding with its roots from the ground and breathing with its leaves but couldn't walk. Kök is root, toprak is the ground, beslenmek is to feed, yaprak is the leaves, nefes almak, to breathe. <sighs> but couldn't walk. Yürümek means walk. Yürüyemiyor is the negation, the uh, abilitative suffix, the potential mood, right? I can't walk. Yürüyemiyor. It's not yürümüyor, but it's yürüyemiyor. Let's continue. Gezemiyor, dolaşamıyor, konuşamıyormuş. 
So it couldn't travel, it couldn't wander around, and it couldn't speak. Again, it's the same. Present continuous with the ability of the potential mood suffix. Günlerini, aylarını hep aynı yerde kıpırdamadan durarak geçirmek zorundaymış. So it had to continue its days and months always at the same place without moving, uh, without moving an inch, without uh, by staying and just passing by. So günlerini, aylarını hep aynı yerde kıpırdamadan durarak. So kıpırdamadan durmak means uh, st- standing still without moving. Geçirmek is to pass, as in passing time. Geçirmek zorunda. Had to pass the time like this. Okay, so next one. Yaz mevsiminin bitiminde bir gün tatlı tatlı bir sonbahar rüzgarı esmiş. So yaz mevsimi is basically summer. The uh, mevsim <laughs> means season. So yaz mevsimi is summer season. At the end of the summer season, tatlı tatlı. So sometimes we can use tatlı tatlı sweet sweet adverb. So it says adverb actually tatlı tatlı esmiş. So there was a breeze that there was a breeze that was basically uh, had a nice uh, nicely blue the breeze nicely blue tatlı tatlı rüzgar esmiş okay tatlı tatlı is sometimes we can make it yavaş yavaş okula gitti so he she went to school slowly acı acı bana baktı so he looked at me with a uh, sad and really sad eyes so it's exaggerating movements gezmeyi seven ağacın çevresinde dans edip durmuş ağacı güldürmeye çalışmış so now we're talking about the breeze so the breeze is also humanified so it's like a person so there's a tree and there's a breeze so the breeze tried to make the tree laugh which was uh, with the tree which wanted to travel and so the breeze was basically dancing around the tree so gaze me seven arch is the tree that likes traveling so this is a basically a noun phrase <laughs> gaze me seven arch uh, and so this breeze was around it and dancing around this tree and trying to make it laugh. Ama boşuna. But it was uh, basically useless. Boşuna. It wasn't working. Boş, empty. It means empty. But it was for no use. It was empty. So we don't really translate it as it was empty. It just means it was not working. It was... Uh, we have another word for it. It's called nafile. So nafile means in English, let's check. It was futile. It was in vain. So ağaç o kadar üzgünmüş ki. The tree was so sad. Here we have the key suffix. The key suffix is really interesting. It's an interesting suffix. We saw, already saw the locative key. So, daki, which was basically used similar to the which suffix. But here, the key suffix is like an exclamation. O kadar üzgünmüş ki. He was so sad that he was really sad. So, so there are different usages of the key suffix. Sometimes it's used as the that uh, word. It's sometimes uh, used like a so exclamation or any kind of thing. So, you need to see it a lot first to know which meaning it is used in the context. So the tree was so sad. Neden böyle üzgünsün diye sormuş rüzgar ağaca. So the tree, uh, the breeze asked the tree, why are you so sad like this? Neden böyle üzgünsün? Why are you so sad like this? So here it's a reported speech, right? Reported question actually. Diye sormuş. It's not dedi. It's not neden böyle üzgünsün dedi. That's normal reported speech. But diye sormak is reported question. Nasıl üzgün olmayayım ki demiş ağaç. This time it's reported 
uh, no more narration. How should I not be so sad? Said the tree. Dünyadaki bütün canlılar yürüyor, koşuyor, yüzüyor ya da uçuyor. All the beings, all the living beings in the world are walking, running, swimming or flying. What about me? Ya ben? What about me? So you can see ya, ya da. X or Y. Ya yemek yapıyor ya da uyuyor. So you can use this actually. You can. I would like to see some sentences if you like. You can say Ahmet ya yemek yapıyor ya da televizyon izliyor. Ahmet is either cooking something or watching TV. Can you try to make something like this uh, in the sentence in the comments? If you're watching it on YouTube, if not, you can later write it on the comments. So can you say make something like X is either doing this or that? It's ya yapıyor ya da yapıyor. You have to use the same tense, by the way. You have to either use the present continuous or the past simple or future tense. Both the structures, both the verbs have to be the same. Ya ben, what about me? Ben. Burada toprağa çakılıp kalmışım. So çakılıp means to uh, be uh, slammed. So I'm slammed, I'm grounded in the ground and I'm stuck here. Kalmak means to be stuck. Ben burada toprağa çakılıp kalmışım. Çakılıp kalmak. We actually use this as a phrasal verb sometimes. Ip yaptı. For example, dışarı çıkıp Arkadaşıyla buluştu. So she went outside and met uh, her friend. So met with her friend. Üp, so as you can see with the üp suffix, we can use two verbs together. So, but these actions are happening one by one. They're not happening at the same time actually. So one happened and right after that, the other one happened. Oysa dünyayı gezip dolaşmak Yeni yerler görmek isterdim. But in actuality, actually, I wanted to travel the world and see new places. Dünyayı gezip dolaşmak. Again, it's the same structure. İp dolaşmak. So you can use it like the gezip dolaşmak. So travel and wander around. And I wanted to see new places. Görmek isterdim. I would have wanted to see them. So this is like... I would have wanted structure. Your make is them. Yeah, mak is them. So maybe you would like to write another sentence. Ne yapmak is them. What would you like to do? What would you What would you have liked to do? Mesela, for example, me. Ben de e, değişik ülkelere gitmek isterdim. Param olsa, if I had money, <laughs> değişik ülkelere gitmek isterdim. Sen sen ne yapmak isterdin? Try to write an example sentence. If not later or for after you exit the podcast, you can visit the video channel and write your example sentences. I will check them for you. Okay. Üzülme. Don't be sad. Set the breeze. Demiş rüzgar. Bir çaresini buluruz elbet. We will Eventually, so elbet means eventually find a solution to the uh, problem. Çare bulmak, to find a solution. So eventually we will find a solution. Yapraklarından birini bana ver. So give one of your leaves, leaves to me. Yapraklarından biri. For example, çikolatadan birini Ahmet'e verdi. Dan biri, dan biri. So dan is a case marker. Do you know which case marker that is? Maybe the locative? No, it's not the locative because there's an N. So it's the ablative. Dan biri. From among ten, there's one. So among them, gave them one of them to me. Okay, let's continue. Rüzgar biraz kuvvetlice esmiş. Ağacın yaprağını koparmış. So the breeze, the wind, there was a uh, esmek, what was esmek? I forgot esmek. To blow. <laughs> the breeze blew uh, strongly, a little strongly. 
and one of the leaves of the tree was p- pulled out. Kopmak, koparmak. So it's breaking, pulled out. So kuvvetli is strong. Kuvvetlice, strongly, you know, as an adverb, the L-Y adverb, right? Uh, in English, it would be, it would be kuvvetlice means strong. But not, I don't, I never heard of strongly. Maybe I'm wrong. Sorry if I'm wrong. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Sonra, yap, sonra yaprağı aldığı gibi evlerden birinin açık penceresinden içeriye yüklemiş. Again, we have the uh, object relative clause. No, it's not object relative clause. Actually, aldığı gibi is not object relative clause. Sorry about that. <laughs> Later, sonra yaprağı aldığı gibi. Eh, okay, we have another gibi structure. Aldığı gibi. But this time it's not like a child, çocuk gibi. This means aldığı gibi. Uh, right after taking it. This means aldığı gibi. Right after taking it. What did the breeze do? Evlerden birinin açık penceresinden içeriye üflemiş. So, it... Uh, Üflemek. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't look at up. If, uh, üflemek means to blow again, to puff. So the breeze puffed one of the leaves of the tree inside the house. Inside one of the house. Evlerden biri. Again, den biri. You saw the structure, right? You saw it with uh, yapraklardan biri, evlerden biri. So there are many uh, houses from among one of the houses. The Breeze blew one of the leaf. Sonra yaprağı aldığı gibi. Oops, I wrote, I read that. Sorry, yaprak salına salına odanın ortasına düşmüş. So salına salına means you know moving right and left and right and left. You know how uh, leaves move in the air, right and left and right and left. So salına salına means. Moving side to side. Odanın ortasına düşmüş. So it dropped in the middle of the room. Let's see the continuation. İşte gördün mü? Demiş Rüzgar. Right. Did you see it? Do you, do you see it? İşte. İşte means here. Do you see it? Said the breeze. Evin içine girdin bile. You're already inside the house. Do you have başka gitmek istediğin yerler var mı? Do you have any other places that would you, that would like that you would like to go? İstediğin yer. Another uh, relative clause, object relative clause. Gitmek istediğin yer. Konuşmak istediğin arkadaş. A person who you what who you would like to talk to. A place you would like to go. Is there any other place you would like to go? You can try to make some example sentence. With the structure, if you like. Evet, evet, demiş ağaç sevinçle. Yes, yes, said the tree. Uh, happily. Sevinçle means happily or uh, excitedly, right? Another adverb. Sevinçle dedi. Bir yaprağını daha rüzgarın esintisine bırakmış. So, he left another of the one of his leaves... To the breeze of the wind. Rüzgarın esintisi. Esinti is uh, breeze. Rüzgar is wind actually. <laughs> so it left one of its leaves, another leaf to the breeze. Rüzgar yaprağı uçurup yakınlardaki derenin suyuna bırakmış. So uçurmak means to make something fly. So the leaf made the leaf, leaf uh, the breeze made the leaf, leaf fly, fly. Uh, where did the leaf fly yakınlardaki derenin suyuna so it made the leaf fly a uh, creek stream so it left the leaf on the creek in the stream what on the water dere yaprağı sürükleyip çok uzaklardaki denizlere götürecekmiş so this River, uh, not river, the stream would now pull uh, the leaf way back to the sea. So 
with the leaf moving uh, on the creek, it will now take it far away to the sea. So this time the tree would be able to see different places way far away from its original location. Sevinç içindeymiş. So sevinç içinde means meaning is excited. It's really excited. Sevinç içindeyim. Or sevinçliyim. It's similar to the word, the adverb sevinçliyim. Sevinç içinde olmak. Sevinç içinde. Same meaning. So the, basically the tree was really excited, really happy. Sararan yapraklarını teker teker rüzgara bırakıyor. Her yaprak geze dolana uça savrula bir başka yere gidiyormuş. So sararan means uh, going yellow or sararmak. The verb sararmak means to go yellow, to turn pale. To, uh, I mean you can use it for a person who's getting sick. Yüzün sararmış. So you look yellow, you look pale. Are you sick? Yüzün sararmış. Hasta mısın? Or sararan yaprak means leaves that go yellow, you know, especially with the changing of the seasons. Teker teker means one by one. So with the leaves going yellow, one by one, he left them to the breeze, to the wind. So the wind was helping them, basically. Her yaprak geze dolana. So each leaf, you know, basically traveling, wandering and flying. Uça savrula, flying around dropped or went to another different place. Başka bir yere gidiyormuş. Sonunda ağacın hiç yaprağı kalmamış. And finally, the tree had no leaves left. But it's okay. Ama olsun. It's okay. No problem. Zaten sonbaharda yaprakları hep dökülmüş. It, it was gonna uh, drop all its leaves in autumn. Anyway, zaten sonbaharda yaprakları hep dökülmüş. Right? So autumn, right? Yeah, fall. So it's the season of fall. So autumn has different meanings. So in the fall, it was going to drop its, all its leaves anyway. İlk bahar geldiğinde. So ilk bahar, do you know what the season ilk bahar is? İlk bahar means spring. İlk bahar geldiğinde. So when spring came, yine yapraklanacak. Değil miymiş? So it was gonna get a lot of leaves again. It was gonna grow leaves again, right? Bir sonraki sonbaharda yapraklarını nereye göndereceğinin hayalini şimdiden kurmaya başlamış. So it started to dream. Hayal kurmak means to dream, to imagine. So it, the tree started imagining where he, she, it would leave its leaves again in the next fall, in the next autumn. It's a really nice story, right? Gezmeyi seven ağaç çok mutluymuş. The tree who loved traveling was really happy. So, this was a really nice story. I hope all you also liked uh, listening to this lesson and listening to my reading. Uh, it was a uh, reading that was maybe a bit difficult for beginner levels, but it's around uh, pre-intermediate maybe so the grammar is not that difficult but there are some structures that may be a bit difficult for you but I hope you liked it I hope you liked the lesson if you're watching this lesson on our social media channels be sure to give a like a thumbs up or whatever or heart or something uh, <laughs> if you're listening to our podcast in especially on uh, Apple podcast be sure to write a comment saying you like the lessons you found lessons useful and write a detailed review if you like and before we finish i would like to mention something uh, you may have heard that i'm remaking the turkish holic website from the ground up so i'm making a really new website that's going to be even better than the current website so there will be completely new turkish courses exercises that are related to each lesson so it's going to be really beautiful so in this new version i'm going to be making six new turkish courses they will start from a1 beginner 
and it will continue until C2 level, so proficiency. And there are no courses on the internet like this because I will be examining things such as the Turkish sounds, pronunciation, dialect, spoken Turkish. You will see this in the first A1 level. And there will also be a new series called Functional Turkish. So it will be similar to the conversation lessons, the dialogue lessons that you may have watched, one of the old lessons. So I'm improving them and I'm connecting these lessons to the new grammar courses. So all of them will be connected, all the new Turkish material, especially the premium Turkish material, will be connected with each other. It will be magnificent. So uh, you know that uh, this lesson, this lesson that you're watching right now was originally a live lesson. I would do live YouTube streams. But then I started making these non-live normal video lessons, but they're still, you know, similar to my live lessons. There's only no chat box, that's all. I'm making new series like these ones. There will be free ones, access, accessible to everyone, but I'm making free ones, uh, premium lessons, which are even more detailed, which examines or grammar, less, uh, grammar structures with lots of examples and the vocabulary inside the new website so there will be also things like that in the new website and many more stuff that i have yet to mention will be available in the new turk sholik website so but i have a really interesting offer for you so if you are an unlimited member so unlimited member is a membership a premium membership on our website Basically, when you become an unlimited member, currently in our current normal website, not the new one, we already have lots of premium materials, such as my introduction to Turkish course, the intermediate Turkish course and dialogues series, the course series. So once you become an unlimited member, you already get access to these courses. Uh, you get access to my exercise database with writing, listening, speaking, and reading exer exercises. And most people are loving these exercises, especially the speaking parts. And you will also get access to the 23 Turkish articles with vocabulary, exercises, and study materials. So right now, even if you become an unlimited member, you will get access to all of these. And you, there's also the beginner Turkish sentences lessons, which are 10 lessons all having 50 sentences with uh, all the sentences are divided into topic and level. You will also get these. There are some example sentences already available both on the podcast and the YouTube channel and the Facebook channel and other social media channels. So once you become unlimited member, you get access to all of these. But a really special offer that I'm making it uh, for limited uh, quantity is if you become an unlimited member right now, you will get free enrollment to my six premium Turkish grammar courses, the one that I mentioned, you know, starting from A1 until C2. You won't have to pay anything else. You will get free enrollment once the new website is up and once you get access to this course, you will automatically be enrolled in these courses, okay? And... These courses are basically nothing like the ones you would see uh, on my free lessons or even the current premium Turkish lessons. So these will be amazing courses. You will see them when they're out. And beside the six courses, so this website, this new website will be opening at the end of this year, at the end of 2022. So maybe if you're watching uh, this lesson a bit late you may have already noticed that the website is open and beside the courses you will also get enrollment to all the new material that comes out in 2023 for so you will get one year of free enrollment to all the new courses that i'm going to publish in 2023 so these uh, enrollments don't expire once you access them and once you're inside them you can watch them years from now so you don't you don't have to pay them there's no subscription there's no monthly payment yearly payment anything it's just one-time payment but 
this is a limited time offer. So basically, I'm going to summarize it so you don't mistake it. I had some uh, questions from people saying, if I become an unlimited member, do I, do I have to just wait until the end of the year to access anything? No. Once you become an unlimited member, now you already have access to the, all the current premium materials. You're also just additionally getting access to my new six courses that will be available at the end of the year, starting the end of the year. And you will get one year uh, of free enrollment to all the additional premium material that I will publish in 2023. So in the new website, there is not going to be any membership system. So when you, uh, if you want to, for example, if you miss this offer and want to get access to the new courses and the new premium materials, you have to buy them individually. So the price will be changed. The price will be really expensive compared to the current unlimited membership price. And, and it's not going to be that nice, you know, if you miss this offer, because this is a one-time lifetime offer. And I don't know, I, I had some people that said that they liked, even they liked the current premium courses, but if they like these courses, they will probably fall in love with my new premium materials. And I stand by my words. So if you ever find any of my lessons or materials not worthy enough, you know, they they don't suit your needs. You can always ask for a refund 30 days after the purchase. So don't worry, you know, if you have questions, you can always ask them to me. You can send me an email, visit the website. Uh, scroll to the bottom of the page and click the contact link and you can see my email there. So as I'm saying again, I'm going to summarize it really quickly and finish the lesson for today. Become an unlimited member now uh, because there's a limited spot, only 10 people left. So once you're watching the lesson, maybe the offer will be closed. I will make an announcement when the offer is closed on the YouTube channel. So if you become an unlimited member now, you will already get access to all my premium courses, the current ones, not the new ones, exercise database, articles, stories, that, that, that, everything. But you will also be added to the list of people who will get free enrollment to the even new courses, new, all of the six new courses, all of the material I will publish in 2023. So you will get one year of free enrollment to all my Turkish material that I will publish next year. So it's a magnificent offer. And I mean, the new pricing for the courses will be relatively expensive. I will make an announcement at the end of the year, but it will be too late if, you've, you, know, if you don't know whether you should apply or not. I believe you should apply because you will get lifetime access to me and my courses. And what's better than lifetime access, right? Okay. Again, thank you for watching this lesson. I hope you liked it. If you have questions uh, about the offer that I mentioned, if you like the help, if you need help with the sentences that I prompted in the lesson, please comment them in the chat section uh, if you're watching it on YouTube or Facebook. If you have questions, you can always, always contact me from my email. You can see my email on the website, bottom of the page, click contact and you will see them. Okay, I hope you like this format. If you have suggestions, please let me know. I can change it accordingly. There will be more lessons coming on uh, soon. You know, I'm making them at, as the time goes because it takes time and I'm also focusing on the new website. So the updates are a bit slow, but don't worry, I'm making new courses. 10 more lessons actually like this, so don't worry. Okay. Take care and see you next lesson.